Ah, Data East, the most awesome, quintessentially 80s arcade game developer. You wouldn't have wanted anyone else to do a game based on Robocop, that's for sure. A lot of their arcade games from the era are flat out fun for several reasons. Either they're really cheesy or somewhat extreme in places like Bad Dudes or Bloody Wolf, there's a whole bunch of unintentional humour in them such as Captain America or Karnov, or sometimes they're just plain great, Karnov again, Chelnov, and Midnight Resistance to name just a few. And then there's my personal favourite, Sly Spy, a game that's a little obscure compared to some of the others I've mentioned. It's not the best game that Data East ever released by any stretch, but it's still my sentimental favourite, maybe because of just how bold it is, one of the most unsubtle rip-offs of all time in the gaming world, and they totally got away with it. First off then, there's the naming issue. As far as the arcade version goes, the game is called Sly Spy in the USA, and Secret Agent everywhere else. This gets mixed up in the home versions, however. Weirdly, a lot of these were sold under the Sly Spy name in Europe, but when you load up the actual game, they're called Secret Agent. It's strange and usually means the home versions are referred to as Sly Spy Secret Agent. In any case, they're all the same game. One big reason for its obscurity, perhaps, is that unlike, say, Bad Dudes or Karnov, Sly Spy never got a console release, no NES version or anything, with the only ports coming out on home computers. We'll get to them in time, but for now let's look at the original arcade game from 1990. It should be immediately obvious where Sly Spy's influence lies. Holy crap, this is the ultimate James Bond game that doesn't have any kind of James Bond license. There are so many James Bond references. Our hero looks exactly like the current Bond of the time, which would have been Timothy Dalton. There's a screen where you enter your code number. This has no effect whatsoever on the game, but inevitably, you're going to put in 007 and be immediately referred to as Agent 007. Our hero's weapon is clearly a Wolfer PPK. There's multiple vehicle sections, including a deep sea diving stage, a Bond staple, and you pick up parts for a weapon that's just flat out named the Golden Gun. You have bosses in the game based on legendary Bond henchmen Jaws and Oddjob, and the final sequence where you stop a rocket from being launched is a clear nod to Moonwaker. It's a James Bond game, without question. Few games have their influence worn on their sleeve as much as this one does, and these days Datoist would have probably gotten sued out the arse for copyright infringement. There is so much James Bond here in fact that I wondered if Sly Spy was ever, at any point, set to actually be a James Bond game proper. Hmm. Well, Data East did have a solid partnership with Ocean Software in the UK back in the day. They worked together very well on Robocop, and Ocean were responsible for porting plenty of their games to computers, including this one. However, I can't find any evidence of Ocean having or trying to get the Bond license, which at the time belonged to another UK studio named Demarc, who produced licensed games for the likes of The Living Daylights and License to Kill, and would later make James Bond 007 The Duel, none of which are remotely as good as Secret Agent. There's no evidence to support this ever being a James Bond license, no word from Ocean Folk or Makoto Kikuchi, this game's lead designer who also worked on Bad Dudes. So with all that said, I guess we go on to the game itself. A bunch of terrorists have kidnapped the president and are threatening to set off a nuclear missile, and it's down to James, um, whoever this is anyway, to stop it. Sly Spy is very much a collection of pure action set pieces. Each level in the game is pretty short, and there's several different types of gameplay involved. The first level is brilliant. You start off free-falling while terrorists from the Council for World Domination attack you, and then you open up your parachute, naturally it's the American flag, and kill a bunch more mooks at the Lincoln Memorial, and then the next stage puts you on a bike, doing wheelies to shoot down airborne opponents. The game continues in this vein, pretty much. The basic stage is a side-scrolling shooter affair that's in many ways like Namco's classic arcade game Rolling Thunder, only without the dual-level setup and the ability to hide indoors, and this is then paired up with the aforementioned bike stage and a couple of underwater stages where you kill enemies and sharks with harpoons. Tigers also make an appearance as some of the game's deadliest enemies, it would be a council for world domination if they didn't get the Animal Kingdom involved after all. Some stages make subtle adjustments. The third stage deliberately limits your ammo so that you'll inevitably have run out by the time you face the boss, who is based on Jaws. Even if you have ammo, he'll inevitably knock your gun away and you have to take him down with your kicks. Funnily enough, the first underwater boss is a massive shark. You get to fight Jaws the Bond villain, and then Jaws the shark. He even fights exactly like Jaws does in that terrible NES game. As with most Data East games, one of the most fun parts of the game is seeing all the references to Data East's other games, both subtle and obvious. 
posters appear for Day Twist themselves and for the games Karnov, Chelnov and Bad Dudes. There's also subtle references. The boss based on Odd Job takes exactly the same stance as the Karnov boss in Bad Dudes, perhaps an allusion towards Odd Job coming from the same family as Karnov. My favourite reference comes in the last stage, however, where you suddenly stumble upon the headless corpse of Robocop. Nope, not kidding. Poor old Murphy wasn't able to take these guys down, but James Bond sure can. And it all comes full circle. A slice by arcade cabinet makes an appearance in Robocop 2, a nice bit of product placement that brings the whole Data East Ocean Robocop circle together. As far as gameplay goes, yeah, I think the game's okay. I suppose it is kind of like a jack of all trades and master of none, it doesn't exactly do anything brilliantly, and it does play a hell of a lot like bad dudes only with guns. However, I have a big soft spot for bad dudes as well, so that doesn't matter a whole lot to me. It's a solid little coin muncher, although not as ridiculous in that regard as something like Robocop is where you die every few seconds in the last stages. With practice, it'd probably be easy enough to beat this game in one credit. As is usual with Day Twist, the game ends with a final boss rush as you climb up the rocket before you take on the main villain himself, a guy who could be any number of Bond criminal masterminds, Oric Goldfinger, Ernst Blofeld, Carl Stromberg or whoever. You break the barrier with shots before the spikes come down on you, and then shoot him dead with one hit. Day Twist were kind of fond of that, Dick Jones in Robocop dies in much the same way as I recall. President Bush congratulates you on your work, but says that you missed a few fins and tells you to go back. Weirdly, this is a total fake out, there's nothing to be gained from completing the game again, and the arcade version doesn't even loop, instead giving you a credit sequence where our hero cruises down the freeway with all the ladies. Even if Slice Spy isn't the greatest arcade game ever, I love it for the fun that it clearly has just ripping off every single fin about the James Bond franchise and getting away with it too. I love it for all the many references it has to Data East's games in general, and because it's such a typically weird Data East title, it has all of their hallmarks and signature touches. It was a childhood favourite of mine in the arcades, and I've got to say that it still holds up somewhat for me as a quick 20 minute blast of action. There's plenty better games from 1990, hell the last arcade game we did, Aliens, is considerably better and from the same year, but Sly Spy or Secret Agent just holds a dear place in my heart. Also, it got some home conversions, and I do feel they're worth noting because, well, despite Slice Spy never being a particularly popular arcade game or anything, they're some of the best and most accurate ports of an arcade game you can find on the 8-bit home computers. Seriously, Software Creations, the guys who did these ports for Ocean, must have really liked the game because they went the whole nine yards to bring them to the 8-bits intact. And what does Software Creations mean? It means that you get music by the almighty Tim and Jeff Bollin. Hell yeah. Actually, it appears as though Jeff Follin did most of the music for these ports. While Tim is the more famous of the Follin brothers, Jeff is pretty much just as talented. Sly Spy made it to the home computers virtually intact. No stages were left out of any version, and they're mostly still packed with enemies. There's only the smallest adjustments that I can find, even on the Spectrum version of the game. Both the Amiga and the Atari ST versions of the game do a fine job with the game's graphics too. They look pretty accurate, just a little slower. Amstrad's also fine, although both this one and the Spectrum version do miss out on having in-game music. The best version though is undoubtedly on the C64. You get the speed, you get all the enemies, all the levels, and a fantastic soundtrack into the bargain. It's great, as good as the arcade version, especially seeing as the music is a lot better here. It may not be the most amazing arcade game to begin with, but this is an absolutely cracking port by any measure. Probably one of Ocean's best. These great home conversions make me wonder even more just how both Data East and Len Ocean were able to get away with this one. Surely DeMarc, whose James Bond games were mostly made for the home computers only, would have been pretty miffed at this game coming out without any kind of Bond license. Who knows, the details aren't there. The game did end up getting budget re-releases on Ocean's Hit Squad label, so it's safe to say that there was no threat of legal action that caused the game to be pulled from the shelves. It was pretty late in the day for the likes of the Speccy and C64, however, which may have caused it to fly under the radar. In any case, I'm glad they exist, and I'm always happy to play this game again, whether it's the original arcade or one of these excellent home conversions. It's certainly a mission that's well worth taking on. <laughs> Bye for now! Thank you for watching this video all about Sly Spy. 
If you like the video then do please like it and consider subscribing to the channel, following me on my Facebook, Twitter and that that you can find in the description, as well as supporting me on Patreon. Now for this video I would like to thank the following. Adam Schaefer, Andrew Dalton, Andy Catt, Audi Sawley, Conformist, Daniel David Taylor, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Graham Blackpool, Ian Roberts, James Id, James Loveridge, Jason Durso, Jason Goy, Jason Leach, Jason Stevens, Johan Eriksson, John Scott, Josh Jensen, L. O'Brien, Lee Norris, ManagerSim.net, Mark Heslop, Mark Johnston, Mark Whittington, Martin Pataki, Lynette McCrone, Olaf Albin, Pete Morris, Peter Jack, Peter Sidorn, Phil Taprog, Potter Margell, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Ryan Wyatt Coleman, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Taylor Armand, The Unnatural, Tanya J, Twisted Squote, Vishar D, Yoka Operator, and Zach Roach.